Welcome to our cybersecurity and local governments presentation. I hope that this helps you understand cybersecurity, the challenges we all face, and how every organization of any size can do certain things to protect yourselves, regardless of your budget. So let's start this presentation. Richard Clark, who everyone knows, works, uh, worked for the federal government for security, has famously said, if you spend more on coffee than on IT security, you will be hacked, and what's more, you deserve to be hacked. I will add, if your organization thinks very little about cybersecurity, regardless of your funding or, or your staffing, you, you will be hacked. So there has to be a consistent, regular uh, management and understanding of cybersecurity in order to protect your organization. So what does cybersecurity require in, within your organization? Well, it requires these five things, basically, leadership. Someone on your staff must be a leader uh, in, in respect to your cybersecurity strategy and management. You must have a proper infrastructure. We'll cover these things in a little more detail shortly. You must have soft and hard solutions. This is software and hardware. You must have a solution in place where you are, and staffing, where you are monitoring and responding to potential threats. And of course, training and more training. Nothing uh, is more critical than having a trained staff. They become your cybersecurity experts at all levels. After all, they're the ones seeing these things come in, sometimes before you. So someone on your staff, hopefully if you have an, an IT leader, they put a course, they need to be responsible for all aspects of your cybersecurity management. Very importantly, your IT leader or your staff member responsible for cybersecurity must be a good communicator with not only the borough or the township manager, but the elected officials as well. As well. These individuals make decisions when it comes to knowing what is important and what they need to spend money on, and it's through communication that you, you can do this. Of course, you have to have an immediate response, an investigation, and rem a remediation when threats occur. Not the next day, these things have to occur immediately before they can um, expand throughout the organization. Smart investment of cybersecurity technologies, the smaller your budget, right? the more smart you have to be about what you do invest in. But there are many good solutions out there that can go a long way in helping to protect yourselves. And of course, again, training for your staff is critical. Why is cybersecurity important? Well, basically, it protects uh, your sensitive data, your PII information, your intellectual properties, your financial information, and all your data information systems are all threatened by cybersecurity. And of course, what, what can happen if things go wrong? Well, you can have financial loss, liability risk, and as well as data and system damage. And all of these things, probably if it were to occur, will, would cost more than an IT professional on staff, if it were to happen. Because it's important to remember, these things occur on a regular basis. This is a never-ending responsibility. Someone must be totally engaged if you have IT staff, they should be 24-7 managing and watching these things. Uh, a committed ownership and understanding is critical to protect your organization. Also, IT staff does not have to be overly expensive. IT staff, because of these things, cybersecurity and just responding to technical challenges that we all depend on, uh, they qualify as exempt uh, as long as they're paid more than $29,000 a year. And by having them exempt, you can control your payroll because these people will be on the front lines for you all the time and you don't have to be dealing with overtime all the time on this. Someone on staff, a CIO or a CISO or someone needs to be responsible for your cybersecurity strategy. If your organization cannot control, cannot, um, cannot afford or does not want to have an IT professional on staff and you do contract out, someone on staff must be a liaison in constant communication with this contractor, understanding what they're doing and what they're not doing. And again, your, tr your staff must be trained regularly. Your contractor is probably not going to do this. This training needs to occur on a regular basis, like quarterly. Local government's cybersecurity challenge. Local governments, just like healthcare providers, school districts, 
universities, uh, and all actually all levels of government, they're very susceptible to, to these, these, these problems. And there are many reasons why. One, some of the things we've, we've been talking about now, right? Poor cybersecurity leader, leadership is often a problem in these organizations. Lack of, talked about this, any information technology staff. I would suggest in the year 2023, IT staff should be just as important as any other department you have within your organization. Insufficient cybersecurity investment. Contracting out to someone and not worrying about it is not enough. Poor day-to-day -day cybersecurity management. You can have all the staff you want. If they're not managing, all the IT staff that is, if you're not, they're not managing and monitoring and remediating and investigating these things, then you're, it's poor day-to-day -day management. Inadequate, if any, staff training. I'm surprised how many organizations do not uh, take cybersecurity awareness training seriously as they would harassment training or anything else. Too much trust with your contractor if you contract it out. Remember, you are not their only customer. An active and engaged technology staff. The IT staff must remain engaged and active regardless of the hour of day. This is especially true when we're local for local governments. This is, because, this is because an immediate response is required to secure a threat. As I said earlier, you cannot handle this the next day. If it occurs at 3 in the morning, it needs to be handled at 3 o'clock in the morning. This is critical to remember. That's why I put that in red. Active cybersecurity threats require an instant response, an investigation, and a remediation. This is something we do here countless times a week. And it's all in the effort of protecting our organization. The technology leader must be able to communicate with the organization's staff in a manner that educates and informs in all elements of cybersecurity landscape. There must be a very positive, um, collaborative relationship with the IT staff, the cybersecurity responsible person, and all of the staff. And this should occur regularly, creating a complete staff of cybersecurity rare employees. The more they're trained, the more they are connected to your IT staff and your cybersecurity leader, the more they're, they're, they're going to be aware and pro help protect us. It's, it's all these actions that protect our organizations. And real quickly, there are, I'm not going to go into detail on these. Um, there are three types of really current threats that, that we're all, always concerned about today. And one is the DDoS threat. For most local governments, I wouldn't worry too much about this. This is when the cyber offender just basically wants to lock your network down by just pumping it with a lot of nonsense uh, traffic. So what we have done here is we have two ISPs, that's internet service providers. So if Verizon was being attacked on our public IP, we, sh we simply would shift over to Comcast until Verizon cleared up our um, DDoS attack. Internal threats, this is becoming uh, very important to be aware of. Threats don't come just from the outside, from cyber criminals. They can come from inside. They can come in from disgruntled employees. They can come in from an employee who's thinking about leaving and wants to steal data. Hopefully this doesn't happen often. But we all need to be aware of these things and take precautions, realizing that internal threats or could be our own staff. So we need to be aware of this. So that's a threat. And the biggest threat today, of course, is email threats. We are bombarded every day with thousands of nonsense phishing emails. And when they land in an inbox of, your, of an employee and they make it through whatever security you have, now we're depending on them to make the right decisions. And these come in many forms now, email, text messages, even voice phone calls. So today, of course, why is email such a popular thing? With, uh, with these attacks because they are lazy, easy threats for cyber criminals to do. All they need to do is write an email that can trick someone and they open up the door, unlock the door, and let the bad guy in because we clicked on a link or opened an attachment or responded to a message. So I'm just going to talk real quickly about phishing emails. This is what we all know. We get these at home all the time countless times. You get more at home than you do at work, hopefully. Because at home, you don't have a big defense system in place. But at, at work, you probably have, hopefully have something. So what is a phishing email? It's exactly why it's called phishing. The cyber criminal is trying to trick the reader into trusting the sender. And this is why you will see very often see ones coming from UPS 
or Microsoft or Google or from even people that uh, you know because they can mask uh, who the sender is. So phishing is the most common threat we're all facing today. If there's a, a very often there's, if there's a successful phishing attack, meaning someone responded to an email or clicked on a link, this very often today uh, ends up in ransomware. And this is another lazy thing that works for cyber criminals. All they are doing is getting access to your data. They are encrypting the data in, a, in actually a, a technology that is commonly used. Banks uh, use encryption. So email services use encryption. When you send an email, it's encrypted with a key and only the receiver can read that. So they're using that type of technology to lock your files and they have a key. They're only going to give you your key back very often if you pay them money. So to pay or not to pay. This is a common conversation that organizations have all the time. Now this is coming from me and, and my understanding uh, of this is I don't believe organizations should pay and I believe laws are going to be changed so you can't pay. Insurance companies are going to stop covering these things. So remember this, and this is why you shouldn't pay. Remember this, even if your data is unlocked and you pay the ransomware, you, they, they're not stealing a physical piece of equipment. They are stealing data. So what they're going to do is they're going to keep a copy and give you a copy back, which means they still are in possession of all the organization's data, even after your data is back on your system. Remember, this, the cyber criminal can do it all over again. Word begins to spread that your organization is an easy target, inviting other cyber criminals to give it a try because they know you paid. The cyber criminal may not actually unlock your fi files once you pay. They may ask for more money. Remember, these are bad guys. Organizations that pay these ransoms are part of the problem because they continue to invite this activity for these criminals to do this again and again and again. The cost is also much larger than the ransomware you're paying. Be aware if there is a, a successful data breach or a ransomware attack in your organization, an overview of your network and your security processes and your policies, they're all going to need to take place. This alone will cost your organization thousands of dollars. There will of course be downtime as a cyber threat is being responded to. If you have no IT staff, who are you paying to do that? That will cost a lot of money. Very often these things we will require new software installations, new hardware even, rebuilding your infrastructure. All of this will cost a lot of money. Even doing all these things, there will be a credibility hit to the organization because other people will know that you have uh, been hit with one of these. There will be li liability challenges for years to come because the data, even though you may have received it back, is now out in the wild and who knows what it's going to be used for. So of course, it's a much wiser choice to have someone on staff, such as a CIO or a CISO, responsible for all aspects of your cybersecurity efforts, including training your staff. If your organization chooses to continue or to contract with a, um, to, to contract your cybersecurity out, you must be in regular communication with that contractor. You must understand what they're doing and what they're not doing. And you still have to deal with training your staff. You just can't sign off with a contractor and think they're handling everything for you. You're not their only customer. Action plans. You need to have an action plan. This is just like an emergency response guide, but for cybersecurity events. This tells your IT staff what to do in case of uh, threats. It can guide your organization from at all different levels what to do if there's a, an active threat. And these action plans should be reviewed on a regular basis by whoever is responsible for them. We have one here and we talk about these things on a weekly basis. So here's a recap. You need to develop a cybersecurity action and response plan. Cybersecurity management must be a primary role of your IT leader. Relying too much on a contractor is dangerous. It is necessary so often to have a contractor. I suggest as the cybersecurity threats continue to evolve and technology becomes more and more critical to everything we do, both here and mobile. How do we work from home and mobile in the, in the this post-COVID world? Technology department should be handled just as important as any other department. 
regular cybersecurity focused IT planning. As I said here, we're lucky we have two of us. We meet every Friday and all we talk about for two hours is cybersecurity. Uh, you should con conduct phishing campaigns. So once again here, we at least once a month, very often more, we will send out uh, targeted fake phishing messages. This allows us to monitor how people are responding and work with those employees who perhaps clicked on a link or acted in a way that wasn't safe. You need to have on-site and off-site backups. If your organization uses services like Microsoft 365, you need to use what they call a cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup. Very often these files are not hitting your server because they're cloud early. So you need to have a service that is doing cloud-to-cloud -cloud backup of all your Microsoft 365 data, if it's Google or anything of that nature, same thing. You need to have physical firewalls and VPNs at all locations. You need to, you need to monitor your web security so you can be uh, for reporting and monitoring. Not only is this good for efficiency where you can control what people can and cannot do on the internet, you can also invest, investigate if there's a performance issue with an employee or if there's a threat. You need to have good advanced threat protection services which includes remediation and investigation. You need to have security awareness training. Try to do this quarterly if you can, if not at least have every other, uh, every six months. Limit the ability to install applications within your organization to trained IT staff. Individual employees should not be permitted to install programs. It should go to someone who's responsible for this. This will go a long way in protecting your organization. Of course, the old school thing here, which is still important, have antivirus running on all the computers. Make sure you can monitor it remo remotely and manage it. Of course, be able to remote in and help anyone remotely wherever you are. But basic help desk services to responding to a threat. Redundant replicated servers. VLAN separation. So I'll use us for an example here. The police department's on one separate uh, virtual network. Our administration's on another one. Public facing services are on another one. Mobile devices are on another one. This way, if there is an active threat and it attacks one of those network, one of those VLANs, it can't jump to the other one. Think of it as two different highways. This is all a network uh, setup. Two-factor authentication should not only uh, be done, it, it should be done now or yesterday. We are actually expanding on our own two-factor. Uh, we already have it, but we're even making it more embedded into what we do every day internally. Two-factor authentication will go a long way in protecting your organization. And of course, IT department should be connected uh, with the onboarding and offboarding coordination with human resources. When an employee uh, separates from the department, IT needs to know this right away so they can remove them from all their access. And of course, when an employee is starting, we want to have everything ready for them on day one and not be trying to catch up. So what, I'm starting to close this out now, you want to communicate regularly with your staff about cybersecurity beyond even the, the, the quarterly training or every six months training. So what do we do here is we do a, we do a, a newsletter every Friday. This, uh, this uh, helps obtain buy-in. So each Friday the employees get a cybersecurity newsletter. It will it recover some cybersecurity information that's in the news I try to focus this where it could help them at home as well. That's important. If it helps them at home, it will help them at, at, at the office as well. So moving forward, what can we do together, all of us, as, as a group of governments? Well, if you want us, we would be more than willing to share our newsletter with your organization. If you would like to do that, just contact me. I can send this out to them on, on Fridays. It's not, there is some Westchester specific things but there's a lot of things that are covering what's happening in the cybersecurity landscape today. We, we could create a quarterly group amongst the cog of IT people to meet you know, quarterly or whatever and talk about the cybersecurity landscape just like myself and Jeff do on Fridays, but do it quarterly as a group. It gives you the ability to learn from each other. I have, we can help you create a cybersecurity action plan if you, if you would like, but everyone should have one. Um, we can work together to help each other if a cyber breach occurs, just like emergency services. If one organization is hit, 
why not have the other organizations who have talent come in and help you with this? Investing in the best and soft cybersecurity solutions that your organization can afford. You need to take it seriously and you need to buy hardware and software and have someone manage that on staff. Understand that all of your employees pay, play an important part in your cybersecurity strategy. There is the multi-state information and analysis center uh, news feed. Uh, sign up for this. You get good uh, alerts. If sort of the Google, if Google Chrome has a, a threat or a, a data problem, a security problem, you will get alerted by this, and you can respond proactively to a lot of security problems that are out there by by getting this information. But once again, you need someone to do that. Sending these to someone who can't act on it or is too busy to act on it isn't really helping. Local government technology leaders should communicate regularly and coordinate with their local police departments. Of course, if a cyber threat occurs, your police department is going to be engaged in trying to help investigate this. So there should be a, a, a link and a connection, a partnership, collaboration between your IT leader and your, and your local police department. These are just some recent uh, national and local cybersecurity breaches. Uh, I'm not going to read through all these, but these are all very uh, much in the news. I will mention real fast the T-Mobile one, where 37 million customers' information was stolen. We should all be aware of this. All of your information has probably already been stolen, either on a personal uh, level or professional level. These, the, uh, you know, and this is because all these companies are being hacked you're stealing data, which, uh, which is basically about your uh, customers. And this is where having two-factor authentication and good password management can go a long way in protecting yourselves and not relying on T-Mobile uh, or Google or Microsoft to do the right thing. We all have to, to take personal responsibility for this. As an organization, that means having someone on staff to do it. At home, that means being aware uh, of these threats and taking it seriously. Just to give you an example, I'm not selling any of these things. I'm just showing you it takes a diverse set of hardware and software solutions to truly protect your organization. And of course, it takes someone on staff to manage these solutions. With that, I'm done my presentation. Please feel free to email me with any questions, ideas, if you would like to to subscribe to the newsletter for your staff. We'd be more than happy to share that with, with your staff. We cover things even like iPhone tips and other things that, that people care about. It brings them in. If I'm showing them how to do this on their iPhone or whatever, it, it, it keeps their attention. So there's other there's cybersecurity things in there and some other fun tips uh, th that can help them in their professional and uh, personal lives. So I hope this helped. I hope it didn't go too long. And if anyone has any questions, be sure to reach out to me. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you and take care and stay cyber safe.